the UC on UCS story. Let's talk about the UC on UCS story. This is a discussion of what we get if we move our Cisco Unified Communications apps to a virtual environment running on a Cisco Unified Computing System platform. There's two parts to the discussion. The first part is, what do you get? What are the advantages and benefits to moving to UC on UCS? The second part is, what do you need to do to get it? That is, what technologies do I need to deploy and how do I deploy them? In this discussion, we're going to match benefits with technologies. In later discussions, we'll go into more detail on deployment and configuration. First, let's talk about how we do things today. Today, each of our UC apps is running on its own separate server. For example, the publisher in our call manager cluster is running on its own server, and that server has its own drives and CPUs and RAM and NIC cards. We also have separate servers for each of our call processing applications, and these servers have their own drives and CPUs and RAM and NIC cards. Cisco collaboration is big. We have many other kinds of apps, each needing their own servers with drives and CPUs and RAM and NIC cards. We have TFTP and Music on Hold apps, Voicemail, Presence, Contact Center, MediaSense, Quad, and others. We can have many, many apps, and each of these apps has its own dedicated hardware. Today's model has served us well for a long time. It's simple and provides a reliable infrastructure, but there are some issues. The first is that we have too much stuff. We have a large number of servers, and they each have their hardware, plus we have power and cabling for all of them. According to a Gartner Group study for today's model, servers have an average resource utilization of 15 to 20 percent. The second issue is maintenance. Say we want to upgrade our publisher server. We need to get the new server rack and cable. We may need to configure RAID on the new server, and we need to do a DRS backup on the old server. We have to install the software on the new server, including any patches, then we'll have to do a DRS restore on the new server. We'll have to check to make sure replication is working between the upgraded publisher and the subscriber servers. And we'll need a maintenance window for this because the publisher is going to be down for some time. If we have a server failure, we basically have the same tasks as for an upgrade. However, for a failure, the work is time sensitive. Until we get that server replaced, our redundancy is compromised. No wonder that the Gartner Group has found that 80% of software expenditures are for installation and maintenance. The first step in moving to a new architecture that addresses these issues is to virtualize our applications. The first technology we'll add to move to the new model is VMware. We can use VMware Standard Edition or even the free ESXi hypervisor. With this technology, we can virtualize our apps. That is, we can realize each application as a virtual machine running on an ESXi server. Virtualizing our UC apps allows us to run multiple apps on each server. Here is an example deployment with 15 apps running on four servers. With this model, we can run at a much higher level of resource utilization. For example, between 60 to 70 percent and even higher for some kinds of apps. So, we need less stuff. Another thing we get with VMware Standard Edition is application mobility. Apps are files. Let's look at upgrading our servers with this model. For our new server, we still need to rack and cable it and configure RAID. We need to install ESXi and configure it, but that's pretty simple. There's no need for a maintenance window for this part of the upgrade, because the ESXi server on the upgraded hardware can have a different name and IP address as the one on the current hardware. Then we can move our apps by shutting them down, copying the files to the new server, and then starting the VMs on the new server. We still need a maintenance window for the time it takes to do the file copy. Compare this to today's model. With the new model, we've upgraded a server for four applications, and we've not had to do any UC app installations and patching. No DRS restores or backups. It's simpler and with a smaller maintenance window. Let's look at the UCS hardware we would deploy to realize these gets. The simplest option is the C210M2 Tested Reference Configuration Number 1. 
With this configuration, the server has three NICs on the motherboard, one of them for out-of-band management. It has an extra four NICs on a quad gig card. The server is deployed with two CPUs, each with four cores for a total of eight and with 48 gig of RAM. 10 146 serial attached SCSI hard drives are used. Two of them are configured with RAID 1 and used for the ESXi install, and the other eight are configured for RAID 5 and used as a data store for our UC Apps virtual machines. The next technology we'll add is a storage area network. We'll take the hard drives for our UC Apps and we'll put them in the SAN. With VMware Standard Edition and a SAN, we get features like vMotion. vMotion allows us to move a running application. Let's look at our process for upgrading a server. We still have the same task as far as racking and cabling the new server. We'll have an ESXi install as before. Again, there's no need for a maintenance window for this part of the upgrade because the ESXi server on the upgraded hardware can have a different name and IP address as the one on the current hardware. But now, when we move the apps, we can use vMotion to move them while they're still running. You may or may not want to have a maintenance window for this. There's no real downtime with this process, and it's very quick compared to today's model. If we can move an application while it's running, why not move a failed application to a new server if the server fails? This VMware capability is called HA, or High Availability. Now, if ESXi4, for example, was to fail, the apps on that server would be restarted on ESXi6. This looks like a hard shutdown and restart of the application, just as if you shut down the server the app was running on and then restarted it. With HA, when a server fails and the apps are restarted on another server, we still have a redundant environment based on our UC apps redundancy strategy. This means we don't have an urgent requirement to replace the failed server. We don't have to drop everything and rush to the data center to rebuild that failed server. With HA, once that failed server is replaced, we can use vMotion to move the apps designated to run on that server back to where they belong. Let's look at the UCS hardware we would deploy to realize these gets. We could use C210M2 tested reference configuration number two. With this configuration, the server has three NICs on the motherboard, one of them for out-of-band management. It has an extra four NICs on a quad gig card. The server is deployed with two CPUs, each with four cores for a total of eight and with 48 gig of RAM. Two 140 gig SAS hard drives are used, configured with RAID 1 and used for the ESXi install. The UC apps are run from a data store in the SAN. For this, we'll need an HBA with two four gig fiber channel ports. If we want to boot ESXi from SAN, then we could use the C210M2 tested reference configuration number 3. With this configuration, the server has no direct attached storage. If we upgrade to VMware Enterprise Edition, we get additional features such as the distributed resource scheduler and distributed power management. These features aren't currently supported for UC on UCS, but you should still know about them. Remember that upgrading VMware requires you to pay license fees, and these are based on CPUs. So a 2-CPU server requires 2 licenses. 10 2-CPU servers require 20 licenses, and so on. You don't want to upgrade to a VMware version unless there are supported features that you plan on using. You can always upgrade VMware later if the need arises. All you need are the upgraded licenses. Our model so far has us manually allocate applications, or virtual machines, to servers. It's up to us to monitor resource utilization and load balance across servers. This is work we shouldn't have to do. With DRS, we can let VMware allocate apps to servers. We can let VMware load balance across the servers, and we still have HA for server failures. Our future model could have our UC app hard drive stored in the SAN. Our ESXi servers provide a pool of CPUs and RAM. We can take our apps and run them without having to worry about which servers they specifically run on. If we add a new app, we just add it to the pool. If a server fails, the apps are brought up on new servers. If we add new resources, then VMware uses those new resources for our collection of apps. 
With distributed power management, when apps are idle, VMware will consolidate VMs on ESXi servers using vMotion. VMware will power off servers with no VMs. When apps get busy, VMware will start up servers and distribute VMs using vMotion. In this way, we have the most economical use of resources. Because these features are not yet supported, you may not want to upgrade to VMware Enterprise Edition.